Right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our annual um, media, uh, MSVR launch day, our media launch day um, for Brand Satch. I think, I don't know how many years we've done this, I guess perhaps since we, the year we first started MSVR back in 2006. Um, but it's always a great opportunity for us to get together the various championships, some of the competitors from those championships that we run, um, together, of course, with the media um, and including uh, photography. And there's an opportunity for people to meet each other, again, from the media side, the championship, the championship coordinators, a few competitors, um, take photographs, and, uh, of course, the always popular rides for uh, media and people around um, on the circuit as we go through the day. Now, I think, as most people here know, that um, clearly the, the involvement that I have in motorsport extends all the way through from the, from the very grassroots side of it, certainly in terms of circuit grassroots, uh, from our things like our track day trophy, people just starting uh, to, to, to go racing as a hobby, um, right through, of course, to Formula One with, um, with Jolien doing that. But I think see, many people do appreciate that my background and what is very much the bread and butter of MSV's business, uh, very, very important to us and very close to my heart, is the whole world of club motorsport. You know, I really started that way. Um, it's interesting how in the sort of era of... Uh, of certainly mine in Formula One, and, and similarly with Martin Brundle and Derek Warwick to an extent, you know, in those days, we didn't get into Formula One by having done years of karting where since we were kind of nine and, you know, spending people spending 200,000 pounds on European karting by 13 or 14. You know, we, we didn't get in any kind of car until we were um, sort of six, 17, something like that, 17, 18. Uh, for me, my world of motor racing started with a frog eye Sprite when I was 17 years old. Uh, Martin Brundle was doing, uh, I think he was doing sort of grass track racing around. Uh, and then again, he was in saloon cars and moved from saloon cars um, ultimately into Formula One. And Derek Warwick was stock cars. So uh, you know, neither, and I'm not even sure if Nigel Mansell drove a cart very seriously either. So things clearly changed in, 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 in a huge way now. It's obviously got a lot more professional, I would say. But nevertheless, what that does mean is that that whole world of club racing, uh, whether it was me participating or indeed even getting involved in motorsport. And uh, I can remember coming along, Brands Hatch was my local circuit, um, coming along and watching minis race, the special saloons, the, the Jerry Marshalls of the world, and uh, Nick Whiting, and those sort of things. They, they were fabulous days. Um, and uh, apart from the fact that's very much where my sort of heritage has come from, um, it's, also, it's also the biggest part of our business um, at MSV. So very, very important to us. Now, apart from the circuits, of course, um, MSVR is the racing club end of what we do. Uh, we also have MSVT, which is the track day arm of MSV. But we're talking about MSVR today. That launched in 2005, and I think we had five championships. Sorry, 2006. We had five championships in uh, 2006. And, and the team, headed by Dave Scott, have done a great job um, growing it bit by bit, year by year. And now, in our 11th year, I think we're going to be running 28 championships um, across 38 uh, events in the season. Um, so it's grown hugely. Um, but what's, and we, what's also very important to us is that the way we've grown MSVR has wanted to be not as a, as a, as a, as a threat and a head-on battle with the other clubs. That's not what we're about as MSV. And that's why so much of what we've developed as MSV are a new championships, further to those that BRSCC and BARC run and Symphony Motor Club. Yes, a few migrate here and there, but um, that's very much the case this year because the new championships that we've got are all ones that um, we've seen an opportunity for with people, promoters behind those championships. We've agreed with them. There's the LMP3 Club Cup. Now, I think LMP3 has been a great success in international sports car racing. Um, the cars, uh, for, from the limited amount I know about it, and Alan's going to talk more about that later on, um, but I think they've got about sort of 400 horsepower V8 engines. They look, I mean, to all intents and purposes, pretty much like an LMP1 car if you put them in the right livery. Um, and the cars are, I think, you know, pretty reasonably priced by international sports car standards of a couple of hundred thousand pounds. Um, so uh, it's, it's a great championship. Alex Brundle, who uh, is my godson, who uh, obviously follow closely with Martin, you know, he's, he's been, he won the championship in, in, the, in that class this year um, and raves about it too. So it's great to have LMP3 here as a British championship and one that uh, will, will, be, will be very, very good for our circuits too. Now, another new one we've got is Z cars. Now, that's not, for those of you old enough to remember it, it doesn't mean a load of police cars running around uh, with sort of Ford Anglias and stuff, uh, the odd Ford Zephyr. Um, but no, Z cars is BMW Z cars, the Z3, the Z4. Um, and again, I saw this championship at, uh, 
um, up, at, up at the racing car show, Autosport International, uh, and was really impressed at the level of enthusiasm behind it, um, the value of the cars, um, fabulous straight six engines. It's going to be good. It's really what, again, sort of club racing should be all about, starter race series, and I'm sure that's going to be a big success too. Very different end of the spectrum to um, LMP3, very much a starter series, but um, really welcome. And then I'm all in for sort of wacky cars as well. I did have an idea, actually, that we should have a championship for taxis. Don't you think? Taxi drivers. I thought all those taxi drivers, they could prove how much better than Uber drivers they were by running around in V8 engine taxis on the circuits. But um, we haven't quite got that far. But things like pickups. We've got the Sangyong, the Sangyong pickup series this year. Um, Sonny Howe has demonstrated that pickups uh, are, are, are an interesting thing. People like watching things different. Our truck racing events are some of the biggest we have. Well, this is kind of a step on the way towards truck racing. And then the ubiquitous uh, Caterham 7. We're running the Super 7 Series. That's a new one, in addition to the ones that uh, BRSCC are, are running um, and have run for a very long time. So a new series on that one. And we've got the VW Racing Cup. That's, that's come across to us um, as, 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 a, as a result of the promoter wishing to do so, which is very sensible, too, from the other things we're doing with, with Volkswagen. So that makes, that makes a lot of sense. So we're running all those new championships. I say Alan Hyde will talk more about those in a minute. Um, but uh, MSVR, apart from running championships, also, of course, runs events. And we are delighted to be running both UK rounds of the Blancpain GT Series um, in, in May, both UK rounds with the Sprint Cup at Brands Hatch, uh, and then also the Endurance Cup at Silverstone. Um, and we're also going to be running the, uh, the only round of the International GT Open Pro-Am Series at Silverstone as well. So quite, you, know, you can see we don't just run things as MSVR on our own circuits. Uh, Silverstone is, uh, is, is, is not one. Um, and as, as, as you know, but um, we also uh, we also run uh, th the race or the the motorsport activity at Carfest. We've run that for a long time, both Carfest North, Carfest South, um, innovative BBC Children in Need. So so those are that's the profile of things that we've done. A thing that we have uh, another way we've been innovative, which I'm, again I'm very proud of the team on, is creating new not just championships but one-off events that are really captured the hearts of uh, of public at large. Our American Speed Fest has been a huge success. That's actually now bigger than a British touring car event in terms of the crowd, uh, which would astound a lot of people. But it just shows the appeal of having a very broad spectrum of off-circuit activity. So American Speed Fest has been a big, big hit. Um, the other one that's been a big hit is a, a new one, um, is Festival Italia, which is based around, obviously, Ferraris, Fiat, but anything it's Italian. And Italian, again, um, really does resonate with uh, motorsport fans. Um, fabulous cars, Lamborghinis, Maseratis, all, and, uh, you know, other ones too. And, you know, Alfa Romeos, Lancia's Fiat's, all of that. So great, and of course, great food um, and great music. So those are all things that we put together um, as part of these festivals. And, and, and that's, been, that's been big, supported by the Ferrari Owners Club as well with the Festival Italia. We've run many festivals very successfully too, at Brands Hatch and uh, at Alton Park as well. But we've got two new festival one-off one -off events for this year. Uh, we've got the Deutsche Fest. Clearly, Germany has got uh, a fantastic history of motorsport history, or mo motorsport with, um, you know, I can remember, again, BMW, touring car racing, Fords, Porsches, Audi and Le Mans. There's so much there, and the road cars are fantastic. Um, so we have a Deutsche Fest, um, a real celebration of German motoring with, uh, again, the cars, Oktoberfest-style beer tents off the track, um, the Volt and from our side, the VW Cup, VAG Trophy, the BMWs, the uh, and the Z cars as well. So a lot of stuff there. Another thing I like about it too, about these things, is introducing a bit of language, uh, a bit of language, simple language education for kids and things. I think that's quite fun. Um, so we'll have a bit of common, we'll have a bit of Italian commentary at the Festival Italia, and we'll have a bit of German at the Deutsche Fest. Um, maybe you're going to have to order your food now. I wouldn't get as good, big a gate like that. Uh, or perhaps I'll forget that idea. But we'll, we'll, we'll introduce a bit of education for the kids on those ones as well. So that's, um, those are the festivals. Oh, there's another one. Mini Festival is extending up to Snetterton as well. So we're, we're pretty much getting around the, the circuits. They're probably one of the few cars small enough to, or at least the old ones are, to be able to have a Cadwell Park Mini Festival. Now, there's, there's an idea. Um, right, but then on to the more serious racing. Um, Certainly the, uh, the, the professional racing, the BRDC British F3 Championship is something which we've run and has been very, very successful. Uh, it, it really has produced some outstanding drivers. It started off as the British F4 Championship. Um, first winner was Jake Hughes. He's gone on now. He's doing European FIA F3. Second winner was George Russell, um, who's, of course, Mercedes' young driver now. Um, George, another outstanding driver. He's with ART 
having done Formula 3 last year, um, he's now with ART in GP3, and I, I suspect he'll be uh, well on the way to winning that championship pretty soon. An outstanding driver. Third champion was younger, my younger son, Will. Um, he's in his second year of Formula Renault Euro Cup um, this year. And, um, and then, of course, we moved to the new car uh, this year, which is the, the Tatus, or last year, I should say, the first year of the new Tatus car. F4 evolved to F3, and that really has put F3 back on the British map where it always belonged. Um, Matthias Leist, um, who won, it, won the championship last year, he's graduating to Indy Lights, uh, the IndyCar feed, in, in the, uh, Indy feeder series. Uh, we've got a really strong package for that TV-wise. It's uh, on ITV4. Um, and uh, with 10 different nationalities of driver, it really is very international, very international in its appeal. Um, it's highly rated. Uh, drivers go on to do bigger and better things, which is crucial for these, these young driver championships. And what's also crucial for them is it is outstanding value for money. At uh, sort of 200,000 euros um, now for a t t uh, to run a championship season in uh, British Formula 3 is phenomenal value when you compare that to sort of 400,000 euros for Formula Renault Euro Cup, 700,000 euros for FIA, F well, six, 700,000 for probably uh, GP3, eight, seven, 800,000, uh, maybe a million euros if you want to do FIA, F3 with Prema. That put, that's put it, puts it all into in perspective. Um, the MS, MSVR also runs the BSB Championship, British Superbikes, clearly where cars mainly here today, but BSB um, is, is phenomenally successful. Um, it's the UK's biggest motor racing championship. The gates are even bigger than British touring cars. We've got an absolutely class act of riders here. The top 10 riders have all won races. Many have won championships. Um, we've got 11 UK rounds, plus the, the Assen Holland round too. So uh, um, that, that, that's gonna be, it's gonna be a bumper year for British Superbikes, I think, too. Circuit improvements are always part of what we do at MSV here at Brands Hatch. We've, uh, we've got track resurfacing at the pit lane exit, new debris fencing. Um, big changes at Alton Park, actually. The uh, runoff area island is now massively greater. Uh, big runoffs there. Britain's has been changed as well. Much bigger runoff area at Britain's at the chicane coming back from Shell Hairpin. And another bit, if you go to Alton Park, you'll, you'll see that visibility is much improved on the inside of Druids because we've cut back the trees over about 70 meters um, and graded all that on the inside. So instead of being ha having the exit of the corner hidden by the trees, you can now see across and see if anybody spun or had an incident again, which all of that to help safety. And at Snetterton, we've got additional runoff on both the 200 and the 300 circuits. There's new Armco on Senna Strait um, and up the main pit straight as well. Um, various changes on drainage and things there. And then, of course, we've got the really exciting news of Donington um, being part of the MSV fold now. It's early days for that, um, but nevertheless, we've, uh, it's a great circuit. Um, and uh, we've got exciting plans, which will hopefully be implemented pretty quickly to uh, start to, some, start to some, um, make some improvements there, even this year. It'll be next year before things really get underway, as I'm sure you can appreciate. So that's a roundup from me. Let's hand over to Alan now, and we'll go through each of the championships. But a final thing for me before I let you go is, look, thanks very much for all for coming, whether you're competitors, um, whether you're competitors or, or, uh, or media or championship promoters. It's great to have you all here. Uh, I know you really, really come for the breakfast, which is why we put it back on. Um, there's the full bit this year, but uh, no thanks. Let's have a great season of club motorsport once again. Alan. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you very much indeed. Jonathan Palmer.